Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Nursing Surgery, Day 4, Topic 8. Today, I, Haika from Group 26, will be your nurse in demonstrating to you on how to take care of patients that have had an ileostomy. Specifically, I will be talking about the frequently asked questions about how to take care of an ileostomy as well as show you how to change a stoma bag which is essential in care for ileostomy. But first and foremost, we need to know the instruments that we are using. The first item that we would need would be sterilized gloves. Next would be two towels. One is wet, one is dry. We would then need ostomy scissors, but I only have regular scissors. Furthermore, we would need a big towel to be placed under the stoma to absorb any stool leakage. Next, we would need a stoma measuring card. This card allows us to measure the size of the stoma. Last but not least, saving the best for last, is the stoma bag itself. Behind the stoma bag is measurements for you to cut according to the size of the stoma using the ostomy scissors. Before we continue with the demonstration, we need to know the frequently asked questions. First and foremost is, how frequently do we need to change the stoma bag? Well, it depends on the person. Usually, it is 3 to 5 days, but some people take 5 to 8 days. And uh, the general rule of thumb is for the stoma bag to be filled up until one third or even half of the stoma bag before it should be changed. However, if there is presence of itchiness or there is a presence of stool leakage from the stoma bag, then the bag should be changed immediately. The next question would be, when do we change the stoma bag? Not as in how frequently, but what time of the day do we change it? Preferably, it's when the gut is least active, meaning that while you change it, you wouldn't see the stool coming out of the stoma and causing more of a mess. And patients usually have their stoma bag changes in the morning before they have their first meal, which is breakfast. And that would be the ideal time, because at that time, the stoma would not be secreting out any stool and causing less of a mess when we change the stoma bag early in the morning before breakfast. Now, 100% of the time when the stoma bag is changed on a patient done by a nurse, the patient would be awake. But in this case, my sister is tired, but I have gained her consent. Thus, you can see a very healthy bright red stoma made out of Play-Doh will be in place of the real stoma for our demonstration. And not to forget, what position is the patient in that we are going to do a stoma back change on? Could it be the lateral position? The Trendelenburg position? I'll give you 5 seconds to answer. To those of you that answered, why? This is a video. I cannot hear you. But if you did and you answered, this is the supine position, you are correct. Usually, a stoma back change can be done by standing up. The patient would do it themselves. However, currently, this is being done by a nurse. And in a supine position, it is the easiest position where we could access the stoma as well as clean it thoroughly and properly without having any major complications. We begin the demonstration by showing you a stoma bag that is filled with the poop. Uh, that is what is written in here, P-O-O-P, -O -O -P, poop. So the first thing that we would do is to remove the stoma bag carefully and properly so that it doesn't hurt the patient when we take out the adhesive skin barrier as well, not giving them a free waxing. And discard the stoma bag appropriately. Now we are left with a dirty stoma. Use your imagination. We would then take our wet towel to wipe the stoma with warm water. And it is important for us to not use any soaps or alcohol-based soaps because it could irritate the skin around the stoma. And that would be very unpleasant. And do not be afraid while wiping the stoma because the patient does not feel any pain when the stoma is being touched. After wiping it with the wet towel, we would use the dry towel to pat it down. 
While we are patting it down, making the surface of the stoma dry, we are trying to ski see for any skin irritations. For example, if the skin around the stoma is red in color, that shows that maybe the stoma bag wasn't placed on correctly in the first place and the feces has been touching the skin underneath the stoma bag, making it red and showing signs of irritation. If you remember, earlier on, I said do not be afraid to touch the stoma and clean it thoroughly with the cloths because the patient would feel no pain essentially. But if the patient does feel pain, that's because the stoma has been infected and is currently having an infection. But if there is no presence of skin irritation and the stoma is not painful to the patient when it is touched, then the person before has done a very good job with changing the stoma bag. Now, you have a dry and clean stoma that is ready for its new stoma bag. But how about hairy patients? Patients that have a lot of hair on the abdomen area. That will be very painful when you try to remove the adhesive of the stoma bag. It would be practically giving them a free waxing. This is where you would need to trim the area around the stoma if the patient has a hairy abdomen. Once all of the things said before were completed, as well as the optional trimming, the next step is for you yourself, the nurse, to remove your gloves because they have been contaminated by touching the dirty stoma. Now that we have cleaned the stoma and changed the bag, the next thing to do is to take the stoma measuring card. This card allows us to know what measurement should be cut on the stoma bag that we are going to put on new. We see this measurement is too big. This measurement is too small. However, this is just perfect. And you also want some space in between the stoma and the skin barrier that we are going to be putting on. This is because if we have too much of a space, it will cause stool leakage. But if it is too small, it will constrict the stoma and we do not want that. Now we know the measurement for the stoma. We take the stoma bag and look behind. As I've shown you earlier, there are measurements on this type of stoma bag. And we know that we need to cut according to the measurement. Usually, this is why we use the ostomy scissors, which have a curved edge so that it allows us to cut in circles. But we do not have that today and I will be using normal scissors to the best of my skill set. After successfully measuring and cutting out the back of the stoma bag, you can now stick the stoma bag onto the stoma of the patient who just had the ileostomy and you have completed the change of the stoma bag. Congratulations!